Alexa, turn on the arcade room. Like, subscribe, share. When Double was young, his mom paid for all these ballet lessons, and he got tossed out because uh, all he could do was break dance. Yeah. Starting off my guitar and game room rundown, over here is the arcade one-up corner. First one I see here is Rampage, and it's running a second monitor over to my Star Wars bar top. And that's a lot of fun. I can get three people on one machine uh, with two screens. They each get their own little area with controllers. And this is my Asteroids modified board. Pretty much everything else is stock other than the GRS spinner. This board has been modified by Barry Barry Sneaky. Geek Sales on eBay. You may have heard of them. I highly recommend that if you have one of these early arcade one-up products, you look in to see if he can add some games to it. Originally, this only came with four games on it. I added Glenn's Spinner, and I sent the board off to Barry Barry Sneaky, and he added several fun games to it. Track and Field is one of them that I really enjoy, and a lot of people do. You can do a specific key command from the control panel and then pick even more games. And I think that's just a great way to get some more enjoyment out of just the stock arcade one up. Because I didn't necessarily want to modify this too much. I didn't want to have too many games on it, but everything that's on here works really well with the stock layout, especially with that GRS spinner. The only games I have a problem with are the Arkanoid and the breakout style games. They drag just a little bit. And here you can see there's uh, the Sega World Rally game and you can control the driving with the spinner and the accelerator with the buttons. That's a lot of fun. Uh, next to that one I have a modified centipede cabinet and this has a mag stick plus there on the left and so I can quickly go between four and eight way control just by grabbing it and moving it up and down. This is a fun little cabinet and a lot of people enjoy coming over and playing it. And it has that trackball on it too that you saw uh, on my right hand there. And a lot of people wonder how you navigate the Mr. Burns image. I use button presses and you have to kind of really go in and assign it. You have to have a keyboard and you have to do use tab to get in there and assign it. I really like this image. I haven't found too many other images that run a lot of these games as smoothly as that does. Over here we have my guitar section. This is to the left of those arcade one-ups. I have a few guitars. I don't have, it's a modest collection, really. I've seen YouTubers, I've seen collectors that have much more intense collections. I, I have really tools for myself. What I have are things that I really enjoy. On top of the guitars, I have some of the arcade double-ups. So if you're not familiar or if you found me through the arcade double-up, an arcade one-up uh, kind of world. Those are the kits that I sell uh, on my website, Arcade Double Up. And of course, there's a nice little Beatles poster that I got as a gift. Then we have my orange Rocker 32 amp. It's a stereo amp. So there's two speakers in there and it's got a dual power section if you run both of the inputs. I love using that amp live, especially for small gigs. Uh, and what I run here at home are those two Laney's, uh, each into one of these cabinets. You saw the Mesa underneath that orange, and then over there to the left, I have a Laney 412 running. I also have uh, below that my Saldano amplifier. I have had that since 1997. Yeah. I got that uh, when I was out with Jimmy's Chicken Shack, uh, and it's just an amazing amp. I, I, I wished that... I had the time to do the loop modification to really get the most out of the effects loop. I'm sure one day I will because that's a lifetime amp. I'm going to have that forever. And I'm really enjoying these Laney's running in stereo or using one of those Laney's and a Saldano as left and right. This is a Jet City uh, combo amp. Jet City 50, I believe, is what that is. Um, and then you can see my board here. I have my looper. Boss RC300 on a little shelf, and then my two-tier homemade pedal board with a Boss ES8 switcher. Kind of the feature of this board. 
Uh, underneath the shelf, you'll see my gain and gate section. I have an Ego compressor. I have the Boss Angry Driver, which is two different pedals in one, and I use the ESA to switch between there. And I also have a, a noise gate after that and after that Friedman BEOD pedal. Uh, and then I have a fat boost that is controllable as my lead volume boost. That is a wonderful pedal for that use. So a quick look at what you see when you look at my pedal board. The, the lower one tucks in. The blue and red pedals here on the left and right of the RC are for control. The blue one does beats and the red one will select my patches and you can see they're running MIDI. So when I select different patches on the red selector, it will call up different memory programs through the ES8. And then I can use the Boss Looper as a master tempo unit. If you tap on any one of those reds, you can see it's adjusting the tempos for all of my delays and modulations and everything really that's running MIDI through the ES8. And then the Boss RC300 is great. I really wish that they would give us something a little more, not something a little less, like they just released recently. And the ES8, if you've watched my videos, you know I like to use it in kind of a mixed mode where I use uh, banks and then also I use uh, P MIDI or I use the different selection buttons to do different commands. So you can see if I hit a button, again, it brings up my boost and it will light up that particular LED that I have assigned to show me that my boost is on. And then also I have on certain patches, I have it set so that I can hit that same button and it will do different commands such as hold or sustain on my delays. And that's great for creating pads when you're looping and doing things like that. Now we see some more of my double ups. These are just leftover parts from arcade one-up modifications that I've done or different parts that I've bought from people. Uh, on eBay, you can find a lot of this stuff. And if you look on Craigslist, you can find a whole lot of this stuff uh, all over the place if you just kind of search. So uh, under there, I have some magazines and some books and some guitar stuff and some toys. I liked uh, collecting toys back in the 90s and uh, especially when I was traveling and touring. My guitar tech, Patrick Dorsey, and I would hit every Walmart that we could and try to find Metal Gear toys. This is um, what looks like a Micro Center uh, bar top, but it's only Micro Center in parts, uh, electronic parts, and in the vinyl graphics. This is actually one that I did cut myself. I made the parts and pieces and uh, bought it all myself uh, as far as uh, the electronics, but I bought most of it from Micro Center, and that's chrome trim that I got from... Uh, I think AutoZone or something like that. I really like the way it makes it pop. Uh, you can see this one. I also really like using the uh, steering controller that I have for my PlayStation 2. It works great uh, if you sit down and just kind of tweak it. Um, a lot of people on the forums and the Arcade 1UP forums have uh, kind of taught me a million things, but have showed me that using the steering wheel uh, is a lot of fun for games like this. And this is a really fun Sega game. It's called Stun Runner. Okay, real quick, guitars. PRS, 2014, Floyd Rose, black, my beauty. I love that thing. Okay, very modern 2019, 2018 telly, something like that. That Danish peat color, love that thing. This is a satin 2018 Gibson Les Paul Guitar Center Special. Great guitar. This beautiful PRS was a gift to me from my uncle. It's a 1998 uh, Custom 22. Here, of course, is the Epiphone Muse that I recently did a video on. Uh, this is my two, I'm sorry, 1994 EG, PRS EG, uh, heavily modded EG. This was, oh gosh, a long story. You've heard me talk about this, heavily modded Strat. The only thing that's really Fender left on that is the body. And here is a fully stock Fender. I believe this is a 2015 Rosewood necked with that etched uh uh, it has an etched headstock for the logo. They didn't do a sticker. They did an etching. And this is a 2019 Gibson double cut. Great guitar. I love that single coil P90 sound. This is a 2015 SE uh, 
semi-hollow, a gift from my wonderful, wonderful girlfriend, Juliet Gilden. And speaking of Juliet Gilden, she runs the YouTube channel, Juliet's Paintings. And uh, she's all over the place on social media. And she's an amazing artist. She painted this here guitar for me. I gave her the body. This was pretty much a kit that a friend of mine found under his bed. He has no idea where it came from. And Juliet painted the front. My daughter's painted the headstock and the back. I still need to oil the 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 neck. I want to do some gunstock oil on it. But it's almost done. It's almost ready to play. And it has the original PRS uh, SE pickups that you saw. I That semi-hollow SE that I have there in the background, I changed out those pickups. And this here is my Squire Bass 6. I use this for looping. I put it on a stand. Um, you've probably seen... Uh, it's or one of my bases in some of the videos and I run it wirelessly over to my board There's a second input for the ES8 So when I want to run a base patch I can just select that particular patch and make sure that it's assigned to that input and this is Probably the oldest guitar I have in the collection. It's a 1986 uh, Kramer focus 7000 Base. It's quite dusty. I haven't dusted it off and played it in a while because that Squire just really kind of took over. The Squire is in between, as far as tuning, the Squire is in between that and a guitar. It's one octave down from a guitar, whereas that bass would be officially two and only have four strings. The bass six has six of them. I really love using the bass six now, and I still need to tweak it a little bit. I want to get a mastery bridge on that thing. And this guitar stand was made out of some leftover parts in the wood shop. And it's just about the right height. It's a little too tall for some of my shorter friends to play the double ups on top of it, but most of us can play it, uh, play those games with that stand there while sitting on a stool. Oh, and there's the master, Steve Vai. Uh, what a great dude. And there's some Eddie Van Halen transcriptions. Rest in peace. He will be sorely missed. I know we celebrated Eddie about a week or so ago on the channel. This circuit is a lot of fun. That's great for making beats and such. And there's my laptop that I use for editing, and my computer was back there. Okay, so here's a look at my consoles. These are all my game consoles. Gosh, this is going to have to be really quick. I probably should have written all this down. I have a Super Nintendo. I have a Nintendo 64. I have an original Nintendo over in the corner that's broken. Over here, I have a Sony PlayStation Classic, a Super Retrocade. On top, you see a 2018 At Games uh, Sega Genesis. Below there you see one of my Dreamcast and you see my Pi 4 and an Argon 1 case. Uh, there's a GameCube with the uh, Game Boy Advance adapter. There's a Wii that I actually got for free from somebody locally. I love that I can use some uh, GameCube controllers in there and below that was the Super Nintendo. We have an OG Xbox. We have one of my Switchers. Uh, there's another switcher hidden behind it that's dedicated to S-Video. There's PlayStation 3, backwards compatible. Uh, there's an Xbox 360, uh, the Commodore 64 Mini. There's a PlayStation 2, one of two that I have. The other one's in the other room. Uh, OG Atari, that's a telegames, actually, telegames version of it. My Xbox One, uh, another Dreamcast, uh, busted Sega Genesis, busted Nintendo, my... Uh, CRT TV, which is a JVC. I actually really wish that I had my Sony over here. Um, you see that controller there is a Mad Cat's Panther for the Dreamcast. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun to use. And then this is my flat screen. Mm, would like to get one of those. Over here, are, you can see in the background, I have some, uh, a couple of more modded arcade units. And I have a couple of my control sticks right here in the front. I have my recently made... Tron stick. I just made that. We'll get a good look at that here in a second. And I have a stand that I use for that and for that Atari stick. Over here, here's my uh, uh, hello, beautiful Miss Pac Man little counter case. She goes with me everywhere, thanks to Detroit Love. Uh, shout outs to all my, all the channels uh, that have really helped push the arcade double up stuff, um, especially Mad Dad's Gaming, Cool Toy. Um, the A one up, the arcade one up weekly, the A one up weekly, and Ralph and Justin, you guys are awesome. I love you guys. Uh, here's the room. You know, over in the corner, I have some some pictures of people that I've hung out with. I won't really get into that. There's a dog bed. There's a dog not in the dog bed, 
Uh, yeah, okay. This is a sleepy little face. Um, and we can get over into the, the, the gaming corner here a little bit more. I have the uh, one of the modified Gen 1 Pac-Man countercades. And then next to it, I have an iCade that I got on the Facebook Marketplace for 15 bucks. Dude, the controller, the joystick alone is 15 bucks. But then I put a little screen in there, and I got some LED speakers from Five Below. And that's that's a fun little thing to just kind of take and put somewhere. Like if I'm cooking in the in the kitchen and I have I have 10 minutes in between things, I'll run over and play a game on that real quick or something. That's a lot of fun to use. Uh, down here, got some movies. Oh, over there, you see a Van Halen, my Van Halen bar top, and a bunch of magazines in the background of my storage room. Uh, movies, games. Um, that there's a controller, a cool controller. I can't remember the name of it right now. One of those joystick controllers underneath the Pac Man that I can use for certain games. Uh, one of the really fun things about this Tron stick that I built is it's got that GRS stick and I've added a thumb button to it so that I can play discs of Tron and Afterburner and other games like that and have two switches at my fingers. So there's a, an index finger switch that it comes with, but then I also added something else. It comes with the LED light. I actually plug it into a USB, a powered USB splitter that's going into my uh, Raspberry Pi 4. I have lights underneath of it as well, so I need a little extra power, so that's going into something that has its own power supply and then goes into the Pi 4. Uh, I'm also running Virtual Man's Image on this particular Pi 4. It's, it's great. I'm running it off a 2 terabit drive uh, straight to USB, no SD boot or anything like that. And swapping controllers, I tend to just kind of, when I use either this stick or the other stick, I'll kind of just pop it out of here and I'll unplug it from a USB extension that's coming out of the uh, powered hub. And then I can take the Atari stick and pop it on here. I got the Micro Center uh, dual fight stick, the one with the trackball, but I didn't opt for the one with the pie because I already had the pie in it, so I saved that money. But it's a really well built. I love this thing. I mean, I really love it. Retro Ralph just featured it on his channel. Um, and of course he had the same kind of issues I did trying to set it up. There's so many different things that when you're going in and setting up particular ports for either a trackball or a spinner or your, um, your mouse, you have to just make sure they're assigned to the particular port that you want to use. And this I have plugged in, uh, you can see, I just have that plugged into just a simple USB hub and then I have one cable running out of the back of it so that I don't have to run a cable for the trackball and a cable for the USB encoder. I can just run one cable out of the back, quickly drop back there behind uh, the stick and plug it into my U uh, the USB port that I need to plug into for my Pi. Now booting up a little bit of golden tea here. My daughters really enjoy playing golden tea, especially Parker. Shout out Parker, shout out Casey, love you girls. Um, but you see the trackball controls uh, your menu options. Um, you assign your buttons to do what you need to do, to assign coins and start. Um, that's all, you know, kind of goes with the territory if you're messing with the pie. And you can see you get a full range of motion here. I keep it just backed up just a little bit from my TV so that I can really do what I need to do uh, and, and really feel like I'm swinging uh, something. I get a full range of motion here. Uh, and it's, uh, I love Virtual Man's image, dude. Virtual Man, shout out. Amazing image. Uh, I'm waiting on Keo and the Supreme team to drop their latest build so that I can just check that out too. Really looking forward to what they have to offer. I loved my Supreme team stuff on my Pi 3s. Uh, and running through the Virtual Man image and kind of tweaking it to work with all these different games and stuff it's just been a really a good time he he puts so much care into his image making and there's some things that of course you just kind of have to tweak such as trackball settings for like centipede you can see right here i'm kind of playing it and it's going a little bit slow so i want to get in there and i'm i'm gonna hit tab and i'm gonna go in and adjust the sensitivity for both the x and the y and it'll make it move a little bit more smoothly for me and I think here I only brought it up to about 50%. I probably should have brought it up to about 70%. But 
it's a blast. I really enjoy it. I think if you get something like this, it's a worthy investment if you have a Pi or if you're running arcade cabinets. A couple of my cabinets have USB ports right on the front. I can just take this stand and put it in front of one of the cabinets and pop it into my USB port, and I can be playing with the trackball into one of the cabinets that I don't have. And this stand is a lot of fun. I purposefully have these circles kind of offset in the back so that I can take that tray that I keep the Atari stick on and set it down like that and get it out of the way of the TV or do whatever I want to do uh, on the sofa and have it lower. Or if I want to sit there on the ottoman and play, I can kind of play a game in this position or two of us can sit on the ottoman and play back and forth and not feel like we're standing up playing golden tea and having to pass this big thing back and forth. So this stand is really a lot of fun. I really am thinking that I should make something like this for the double ups that has this kind of flexibility. If you've watched this far and you're familiar with my double ups and this is something that you would like, please leave a comment below. I need input. I want to know for sure that people would like something like this and that if you've bought a double up, you would like a stand. I've had a number of emails asking me for a stand for it. I'd like to make something a little more multi-purpose than just a straight up stand for that because you can get a lot out of something like that. Okay, anyway, enough about that stuff. Here's my you know, modest collection of games. I, I, I don't buy a lot. I have some Wii. I have some, as you see, OG 360 games here. I did enjoy running around and buying uh, three, uh, I'm sorry, uh, some OG Xbox games. I did enjoy running around buying OG Xbox games when they really started hitting low prices. Uh, some of my original guides um, and some printed out ones. I have some Dreamcast magazines down there. I just love the Dreamcast. I have two of them. I just love it. I'm, I'm going to end up having to do one of those modded drives for one of them, I'm sure. Here's the original Nintendo games that I have. Yeah, Boba Fett, Pez. Um, some good games in there. Some Super Nintendo games uh, that I have as well. Um, like I said, modest collection. Please don't make fun of me. I also like to buy guitars. And I have twin daughters that are 14. So most of my money for the past 15 years has gone to them. Uh, and I buy used stuff or I buy stuff in bits and pieces in order to build what I need to build. And that's just kind of how I do it, whether it's a pedal board or an arcade build. So here's some PC games. Oh, dude, Einhander. If, if you can find Einhander for PlayStation 1, I highly recommend it. And you're into shoot 'em ups that's a great game. Fun Dreamcast game, Samba de Amigo. I only had the discs for those, I, so I found some CD holders and printed up some artwork. Uh, there's some of the PlayStation 1 games. Here's some of my Dreamcast games. I'm not going to pull each one out and go through through it like that. I loved Quake 3 Arena. Um, I loved a lot of the fighting games um, and the first-person shooter games. The I have all of the uh, light gun games. Project Justice is a, is a really fun, crazy, quirky fighting game that I highly recommend. And I picked it up the first time I saw it back in the day, and I had no idea it was going to become so collectible, obviously, but it clearly is. Uh, Soul Calibur, one of the best games, one of the best fighting games ever made, I think, really. Um, and one of the best games ever, Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation. Uh, but it, I have the Bleemcast version of it because, you know, and the Bleemcast. Who, who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want Metal Gear to just look a little bit better? And, and who wouldn't want to play it on a Dreamcast controller? Right. I'll leave that there. Um, anyways, light gun games. I'm all about peripherals. I'm all about trying to play the game as close to the real experience as you can. Fight sticks for fighting games, light guns for light games, spinners for spinner games, trackballs, twin stick games, driving. I'm going to end up making a driving cab one day. I'm going to end up hopefully adding a Sega Saturn to my collection here. Um, Alien Front Online, great game for... Dreamcast. There's a few PlayStation portable games. I really wasn't too into that system, but I think I should mod the one that I have. I love the PlayStation 2. <clears throat> got two Dreamcast, got two PlayStation 2s. A couple of PS3 games. I really got that so that I could just play everything out of one source HDMI. Some Xbox One games. I really don't play a lot of Xbox One games. I use it for YouTube, Netflix, um, you know, movies, things like that. And, and 
um, I'm hooked on YouTube. I sit down and I watch so many different things, you know, from uh, guitar channels to game channels to whatever my algorithm sends me. So here's my stand with the Tron stick in it with a little bit of light below it. I like the way that the, the chrome and the mirror below it just kind of helps reflect all the light around it. I really enjoy playing, like I said, games the way that they're supposed to be played. So playing Discs of Tron and just showing my nephew the other day this fun game that I used to play in the 80s, in the early 80s in the arcade, a timeout or um, any one of the local places that would have it, but I distinctly remember it being in timeout in Frederick. I, I would flock to that arcade with, even if I just had a couple dollars worth of quarters, I would go play Tron and Pac-Man and uh, Space Ace, Centipede, Dragon's Lair, yeah. It's just, it's a lot of fun, and I really love trying to have the proper interface. And here's Tron being played the way it's meant to be played. So, man, thanks, Glenn, at GRS Products, Glenn's Retro Show. You got to find him on YouTube if you're into this kind of stuff, or if you have any questions about these kind of things. He does great videos, and he's a wonderfully friendly person. And he he's just informative to watch like a lot of guys on YouTube, and but he also just has a certain heart about everything that he does. And putting the spinners out there like he did, um, and this stick out there, and just making it feel the way he did, uh, it's, it's just great. I really enjoy playing all these classic games the way that they're meant to be played. Um, and shout out to Arcade Workshop. I think it was Arcade Workshop. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I write it in here. Uh, and gosh, if I'm together enough, I'll leave some links to some of these people I'm talking about below. But shout out to him for giving such a great lesson on how to add a thumb button to this GRS Tron stick. Because some of these games are just, it just takes it to the next level having a thumb stick like that. And again, thanks for tuning in. This has been a long video. I really didn't plan on it being this long. I've wanted to do this for a long time. I've wanted to make... A video like this but I keep changing things and keep adding this and then oh look I got two uh, screens running on the same cabinet oh, let me, wait let me do this I want to finish this oh, I want I can't do a video until I have this running so you know I, I've, I've at least I put a little patience in and um, finally got some quality reasonably quality uh, video footage and a couple of minutes to sit down and kind of talk to you guys about what I do here uh, when uh, when the camera's not running. So, shutdown time. Game over. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and share. Please. This is Double D. And I really appreciate you watching. Leave a comment below. All my best. Take care.